Hello, this is Needlepointers.com. Today I would like to show you how to make a cute Halloween decoration for your home, a candy corn banner. Follow along with this video and go to our website for a photo tutorial with step-to-step -step instructions. You will find a link in the video and also in the description section. Do you like this fall no sew fabric wreath you see here? It is so easy to make. We will also have a link to this project in the description section. To make the candy corn banner you will need the candy corn pattern sheets page one and two, candy corn fabric yellow, orange, and white, fabric for the back of the candy corn piece, black double fold extra wide bias tape, or you can make your own tape and I will show you how, rotary cutter, ruler and mat, best press, sewing machine, iron and ironing board, scissors, and basic sewing supplies. Go to our candy corn banner page to download and print the two pattern sheets. We will have a link in the video and description section below to the page. Once you have downloaded the patterns, then cut them out. Since I wanted to make a candy corn banner, I went online to get some inspiration. And a lot of the sites said to sew together the three strips, the yellow, orange, and white, and sew these strips together. Then they used a template to cut out the candy corns. Now, candy corns, as you can see here, are yellow, orange, and white. They're all the same. These sites were telling you to cut your template this way, then flip it over and cut it this way. So then the candy corns would not be with the yellow on the top. You would have a white, orange, and yellow. I didn't want that. Some of them said to just use the ones that were the yellow at the top and to use the ones with the white at the top for another project. I did not want that. I wanted my candy corns to look exactly like they were supposed to. And that's why I decided to use templates to put the candy corns together. To prepare the fabric for cutting, spray it with best press to give the fabric body and to iron out the wrinkles. Before cutting the strips, you need to measure and verify the width of the pattern pieces. Uh, I can only give you an approximate width that you will need to cut from each color because your printer may distort the actual size slightly. So you will need from the yellow about three inches, from the orange four inches, and from the white five inches. But please measure before cutting. Let's begin by cutting the yellow fabric. Fold the strip in half. You'll see that there's a fold down here. Place the pattern on it and then I'm just going to use a pencil to draw a line right where I want to cut. And I'll do the same thing over here. Now since this fabric is not directional, all I have to do is turn it, line up that drawn line, and draw another line. A 
after you've done that, take your scissor and just cut the piece. Now do that for all three of the pattern pieces. Okay, so let me show you. Here's, I cut the first one. And of course, I have two. Let's move it over and I'll show you. All you have to do now is cut along that line. Continue to do this and make as many of the candy corns as you would like. Okay, let's begin chain stitching the candy corn pieces together. Now, with, you're going to put the right sides together this is the top and of course the middle and you will notice that it's a little bit longer the orange piece is a little bit longer than the yellow piece just center it so that there's a little bit on this end and a little bit on this end then place it in the machine and use a quarter inch seam allowance and begin to stitch it together You may wonder what I mean by chain stitching. What I mean is you just leave this in the machine, line up the next two pieces, place them under the presser foot, and sew those together. And continue to do that until you have all the yellow and orange pieces together. After sewing the yellow and orange piece together, you're now going to sew on the white piece and do the same thing. Line it up and the white piece, again, I'm going to turn it over so you can see, is a little longer than the bottom of the orange piece. Just center it and then begin to stitch. And again, do a um, continuous stitching and um, one thing that that does when you're doing this is you it makes it go fast and also you are saving on thread okay that one's done I've got the next piece with of course right sides together I'm going to line up the two pieces and stitch when you finish sewing all the pieces together, it's time to press it. Now, I recommend that you definitely press the uh, seam that at the white to the inside so it won't show. But the yellow one, I'm going to press it all in the same direction. Turn it over and press the right side. The candy corn piece is finished. Now we have to put the backing on. So let me show you how to do that. You have to decide on the color of the background fabric that you want on the back of your uh, candy corn. Originally I was going to use the orange and when I put the orange up against it I could see th the orange through the white so I have decided that I'm going to use white instead. Now just double it over like you did when you did the strips. There's two here together so we'll be cutting two of these out at the same time which makes it really simple. Pin it and then just Cut it out. Then we'll be turning it the other way and doing the same thing. So it doesn't take long to make these once you get started. And just cut along it. Now down at the bottom it is a little straight across and there is a reason for that and you'll find out when we're sewing it together. And cut out all the backing pieces. Take the backing fabric and the candy corn fabric 
and put it together with right sides together. Begin stitching with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and you really do not need to back stitch at the beginning because this is going to be going up into the tape that we will be making to hold the uh, candy corns and to hang it up uh, wherever you want. Now I did pin it in a couple of places just to hold it together so it won't shift as I'm sewing. Now when you get down to the bottom where there's a straight edge down here and when you get about a I'd say about a quarter of an inch away or maybe not even a quarter I guess it's a little less than a quarter or a little I mean a little more than a quarter stop with the needle down turn the fabric and take two little stitches straight then pit, lift the presser foot pivot and sew up the other side this may seem strange, but it will help make a point in the candy corn when we turn it right side out. Before we turn this right side out, we want to do a little trimming. So I'm going to trim away some of the bottom and then on an angle, but please make sure that you do not trim into the stitches. All right, let's turn it now right side out. Now, with some sort of a poking instrument, I'm using just a little wooden one, we're going to poke out the bottom and see how we're getting a nice point. Okay, then just turn it. And now we want to press it nice and flat. And the first candy corn is complete. I'm going to use a little more of this best press just to make it a little stiffer and so it holds its shape. Now another thing you can do, I'm not going to do, but you could, is you could edge stitch all the way around here if you'd like. Now what you need to do is to attach these candy corns to something so you can hang them. You could use black bias binding tape uh, which you can purchase in the store but I have some black fabric so I decided I was going to make my own uh, tape to hang them from or my own binding tape it's not going to be on the biased tape to hang them from. I have five candy corns so I'm going to need tape that's a about 60 inches long. I've cut two pieces of fabric. They're two inches wide and now I'm going to show you how to make your own binding tape. To make a continuous strip, line the two pieces up. This is the selvage so I have that extending out over the side and with the right sides together I put a little pin just to make sure that they hold in place and draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. Now we're going to be sewing along that diagonal line. When you're finished sewing, Cut about a quarter of an inch from your sewing line.
now we'll go to the iron and finish up making our binding tape. The first thing you want to do is to press the seam open. I know it's a little hard to see with this black fabric. Um, I wanted to use black for my uh, binding tape on my project. And then what you're going to do is you're going to fold the fabric lengthwise in half. I'm just going to show you a little bit on this end and then I'm going to do the whole thing because I the, would be too long if I showed you how to do the whole thing. So you're going to fold it in half like that. Then you're going to take each raw edge and you're going to fold it to that center crease. So you're going to and you're going to press it. So you're going to do that side. You're going to fold the other side the same way to the center crease and press it. And then you're going to fold it again on itself in half. So you have two nice folded edges here. There's a crease in the middle and the raw edges are inside. So do that on the entire binding tape. Leave a tail that is about six or eight inches long. Then take your candy corn, insert it between the two folds. And then pin it. Okay, now I would like my next candy corn to be about two inches away from the other one. So I'm taking my little ruler. Again, I'll put the candy corn between the two folds. I want it, as I said, about two inches, so I'm going to move it. And again, pin it in place. After I get them all pinned, I'm going to go to the sewing machine and sew it. Edge stitch close to the two folds about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch away. When you get to your candy corns, just make sure that they're tucked in there good and continue to stitch. I'm going to uh, continue on and then I'll show you. We're going to have to finish up the, there's a raw edge here, so I want to show you a technique for finishing that. I'm finished with, I want to now show you how to finish the raw edge. I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I like my things to look neat. So this is the top, as you can see. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to fold it back about a half an inch. Fold it back again a half an inch. I'm going to put it under the presser foot and I'm going to do a little zigzag stitch along there, a narrow one. I'm going to go forward and then back. And I'm done. And you have a nice looking end. After I get all the threads cut off, this is what the end looks like. I hope you enjoyed this video and decide to make a candy corn banner. Please like, share, and comment. Subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. To follow us, click the iCard or the link in the description section. Also, go to our website, 
because we have lots of free fall and Halloween projects.